All right, welcome to uh, Tuesday NCCT prep. I almost said Monday. We don't want to do Monday again, do we? Um, we're going to be doing laws and ethics, and it's only going to take a couple of weeks for this to get finished. What happens after we're done with laws and ethics? Well, there will be another instructor that's going to take you into another part of the NCCT review and talk to you about that. So you will go through each section of the NCCT except for CPT coding, ICD-10 coding, and HICS picks because guys, we go through so much coding, right? And there's not a huge amount of coding on this test and it's multiple choice. So, um, you know, if you want extra practice in those things, get with your instructor and I'm sure she can arrange that. So let me share my screen real quick. <clears throat> okay, can you guys see the bumblebee? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so how many of you have received a an email with Moodle? I don't think I have. I didn't see it, but that doesn't mean I didn't get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somewhere. All right. I've, I've so be that. looking for an email for Moodle login information. Okay. We're changing e-learning platforms. Sean, I don't, um, I think you may be in there a few days and that's it. Okay. Why are we changing e-learning platforms? Because Genzabar simply did not do what it was supposed to do for us. Maybe you guys haven't had any issues with it, but switching the e-learning platform is something that comes down from the CEO and he makes those decisions. All right, good news about Moodle. You can do everything, everything on your phone. So if your computer's, computer's on the fritz, or you're at work and you have a lunch break. Uh, Gensabar, you could do some on your phone and sometimes you couldn't do it on your, it was not as phone friendly. Um, when they made the decision for an, a new platform, they made sure that it was going to be easy for you to access what you needed to on your phone. That being said, Sims chart is never gonna be accessed through your phone. It's just not gonna let you. It's nothing to do with me. It's the way their system is set up. So, but still, bell ringers, you know, my class, you know that, um, you know, it, it, I'm asking you, what's the date of birth of blah, 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 whoever and whoever, but um, you're still going to be able to answer those questions. Um, if you have a definition, you're still going to be able to put that in there. Um, so that is why we're switching to Moodle. So I'm going to share my screen again. So make sure you're ready to log in to the new e-learning. When you get your Moodle logins, just go ahead and make your account, okay? But you're not going to be able to get in and do anything. If there's anything there, please do not touch it until your instructor gives you the go-ahead, all right? I'm already putting assignments from that we've already completed into Moodle, so I'll have an updated gradebook. I don't need, you know, we don't need you guys to get in and do anything, but you can be watching for those emails. Please do not get uh, stressed out about it. It's very easy. I was able to get in it and in five minutes I was able to make assignments. So if I can do it, you guys will be great. You guys will be great. Okay, so let me get out of that. All right, so we're going to get straight into our NCCT. All right. If you guys purchase the insurance encoding um, packet, it, this is what it's going to look like. So let's go over your detailed test plan for laws and ethics. What are you going to need to know? Well, you guys are going to learn all you need to do in the next couple of weeks, but um, we're going to talk about comply with fraud and abuse regu regulations, the Stark Law, the Anti-Kickback Law, Federal Claw, uh, Claims Act. Okay, so if you have a pen and paper, I'm going to take just a moment before we get into the practice. Okay, Stark Law. Besides Stark Law, I want you to put referrals.
and a facility in which you have financial stakes in. Referrals in which? Uh, inferrals and facilities in which you have a financial stake in. I'm gonna give you an example. My name is Dr. Cardiology. My brother's name is Dr. Hart. My sister's name is Dr. Blood Vessel. We all run a portion of cardiology clinics. So every referral that Dr. Hart gives he gives to his siblings in which he has a financial stake into their facilities. Does that make sense? He's invested money in both his siblings financial uh, in their facilities. And so he has a financial stake. So he is hoarding all the referrals and just giving them to his siblings, his family. He's keeping that closed in and not allowing other doctors to have referrals. So let's talk about anti-kickback. So when you think of- oh, I'm coming out there. You think I'm coming of out there. football, yeah. right? Oh. So anti-kickback law is anything that you give, for example, if I give you football tickets and you never charge me, for my medical bills. It's giving a gift in lieu of paying. That's a kickback. If Dr. Hart talks to Dr. Foote and Dr. Foote says, if you send all of your people to me, I will give you season tickets to go to the Saints. That's a kickback. Baby. So the Federal False Claims Act is exactly what it sounds like. It's false claims. Anytime that you are uh, filing a claim for something that was not done or charging for something that was not received, that is a false claim. Okay, HIPAA, we know what HIPAA is. It's privacy and security, but high tech, I want you to put beside high tech, tech the word meaningful use. And you're gonna see why when we go through. So Truth in Lending, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. We're gonna talk about what is fair in debt and collections. Comply with the state and federal regulations related to billing and coding. If you have any complaints about insurance, you will contact the OIG, Office of Inspector General. Recognize responsibilities and the scope of practice for the insurance and coding specialist. Recognize and respond to violations of medical law. Now, before we get into that, I want to come back over to my Canva. I'm sorry, I should have kept that pulled up. And I want to just, and specifically, I'm going to, I want to talk about two things. Abuse and fraud. Now, when we think about abuse, what do we think about? We think about, you know, somebody hitting their spouse or hitting their kids or hitting their parents or, you know, things like that. But when you're talking about it from a medical billing standpoint, abuse is unintentional and improper. So abuse in medical billing is unintentional. Fraud is intentionally cheating on someone illegally. Okay, so let me go a little bit further over. I want to go over something that you may not have heard of before, and we'll go over this again in a different part of class. I want to talk to you about the birthday rule. 
So if a child is covered under both parents' health plans, a provision known as the birthday rule comes into play, guiding how the coordination of benefits will work. The birthday rule says that primary coverage comes from the plan of the parent whose birthday month and day only comes first in the year. The other parents would be secondary. So if me and my husband both have a primary insurance and the doctor's office is having to say, well, who's going to be primary when we send these claims out? My birthday is July the 5th. His birthday is November the 21st. Who's going to be the primary carrier? Who's going to be the one that's primary? He is. The person in June is primary. I'm sorry, Jessica? So the person June. in June is primary, right? You the person in July, so it would be me. Oh, July. Mm -hmm. that, that's good. Because my birthday comes first in the calendar year, mine is going to be primary, my husband's will be secondary. Now, if you don't have two primary insurances, that, that's not going to be a problem. But in case you ever come across that problem, you can just recall the birthday rule. All right, I'm looking for the... Uh, Okay, so we're going to talk about how a debt collector can contact you. Our favorite thing in the whole world, right? It's wonderful. We all have it happen at some point or another. So how may a debt collector contact you? A collector may contact you in person by mail, telephone, telegram, or fax. However, a debt collector may not contact you at an unreasonable time or place such as before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m., unless you agree. A debt collector also may not contact you at work if the collector knows that your employee employer disapproves. You shouldn't contact at work. May a debt collector contact anyone else about your debt? If you have an attorney, the debt collector may or may not contact you can contact the attorney, but the debt collector may not contact anyone other than your attorney. So I can't call Sean's mama and say, hey, Sean owes me money, <laughs> right? I can only deal directly with Sean. <clears throat> if you do not have an attorney, a collector may contact other people, but only to find out where you live and work. All right, now we're going to go into the test. Now that I've given you a little bit of the information, we're going to do our interactive review. Now, I want you to know that if you get an answer wrong, I don't want you to feel bad, right? On our mm -hmm. last day, we'll run through these again quickly. This is just learning. Okay. So which of the following activities is an example of abuse rather than fraud? Upcoding, misrepresenting the di diagnosis, advertent, coding errors, billing for services not rendered. Okay, let's talk about it in a minute. In medical billing and coding, in medical billing, abuse is un intentional right right i know it's against our better judgment to even think in that direction but you must abuse is unintentional so which one of these say unintentional the a misrepresenting the diagnosis c c, c. okay c. the word oh, inadvertent oh. the word inadvertent means Unintentional. So inadvertent coding errors line up with unintentional. Upcoding is an intention. Misrepresenting mm -hmm. the diagnosis 
They're making a clear conscious decision to misrepresent what the patient has. And billing mm -hmm. for services not rendered, again, it's fraud. It's intentional. So let's go with inadvertent coding. Yeah. And that's right. Abuse is an unintentional mistake. Fraud is an intentional misrepresentation for gain. Upcoding is misrepresenting the diagnosis and billing for services not rendered are examples of fraud. Inadvertent coding errors are examples of abuse. Sounds, I mean, doesn't even sound right with me reading it, but we're just going to have to remember that. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go with the laws. Let's see how we did. Which of the following legislation prohibits physicians from referring patients to an entity if the physician or a member of her immediate family has a financial relationship with the entity? E. Stark Law. E. E. Stark Law. You, we think Stark Law? Remember those mm -hmm. keywords that I gave you when I told you to write down Stark Law? I put mm -hmm. referral and um, a physician has a financial. So let's see. Yes, the Stark Law prohibits physician from referring patients to an entity if the physician or immediate family member has a financial relationship with the entity so that a physician does not do referrals for personal gain. All right, we're gonna move on. See how those little keywords that I gave you are gonna lead you to the right answer? As long as you remember those little keywords. Which of the following is an example of the Stark Law violation? A physician using self-referral, unbundling procedure. Yep. Sean, hang on. <laughs> Asking for payments from a minor, a physician receiving kickbacks. It would be A, right? A. Everybody think A? A. A. Let's try A. You are correct. It is A. Again, you saw the word referral in there, right? <laughs> it's a key word. A specialist gives a general practitioner concert tickets every time he refers a patient to him. This is illegal according to D. 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 The anti-kickback law. Yeah, A says the antitrust law. That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the anti-kickback law. Do you guys agree? See, yeah, yeah. we're talking about getting concert tickets for referrals. That's a kickback. The anti-kickback law prohibits offering, pay, paying, soliciting, or receiving anything of value to induce or reward, uh, or reward referrals. All right. Which of the following laws pertain to an insurance and coding specialist who knowingly presents an incorrect, don't, no one answer out because I'm going to offer some explanation first. No only presents an incorrect CMS 1500 form for payment to a payer. Okay, so a CMS 1500 form, what is that? Well, that's an electronic form that when you get in and you start putting your billing in, everything <coughs> that you have the insurance to pay for is on this form. It has the name, the date of birth. It's going to be coming on Tuesday Zoom, uh, Thursday Zoom. I'm going to be doing Thursday Zoom, and we're going to be looking at the 1500 form. It's a bill to the insurance company of what the physician expects to be paid for. All right, it's a claim. All right, so which of the following laws pertains to an insurance and coding specialist who knowingly presents an incorrect CMS 1500 form for payment to a payer. A. 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 Why is it A? It's because a CMS 1500 form is a claim, right? Mm -hmm. it's the only thing, yeah, it's the only thing that has anything to do with the with the claim in the these um choices. <clears throat> the Federal Civil False Claim Act prohibits the submission of knowingly false claims for the purpose of receiving extra undue money. All right, number six. 
which the following regulations prohibits a physician from referring a patient to a facility in which the physician holds a financial interest? C. What is it? C. C, Stark Law. C. Okay, I heard somebody say different than C. C. C? All right, let's try. You guys are correct. Again, the keywords that I gave you, referring, financial interest, Stark Law. Next question. A local laboratory sent a physician two tickets to the football game. As a thank you for referring patients to its testing center, what has been violated? B. 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 We think the anti-kickback law? Are you sure it's not HIPAA? Yeah. <laughs> I love the assurance, Jessica. B. That's okay. what I'm looking for. Thank you. B, B. anti-kickback law. You are right. The anti-kickback law. Because we had two football tickets, right? Right. Oh, I'm going to give you these tickets because you're referring people to me. And woohoo, we got a good thing going. That is against the law. Okay. Does it still happen? Yes, it's not my job to go out and police it. But we're learning about laws and ethics. So, okay. A lawyer has called and demanded information about a patient in the office. The insurance and coding specialist can share the information if. Okay, so let's think back. Let's think about us. When we go to the doctor's office and we're filling out our information, one of the things that we have to sign is a release, correct? And that means I can release information to the third-party payers. Now, if you say you cannot release my information to anybody, guess what? The bills are going to go straight to you. But you have to have a release form signed. When you think about it on our side, which would be the patient side, think about the information that you guys fill out constantly for the kids, for your mother, for every, you know, we fill it out for everybody. But we always have to sign a release form giving permission to release the medical information. There's even a clause in a lot of packages that say, who can we not give this information to? I never put anything, but, you know, you may say my, my husband cannot get, you know what I mean? So, so we're that, that's what they do. Okay. So now that I've given you that information, a lawyer has called and demanded information about a patient in the office. The insurance and coding specialist can share the information if she calls and the patient, the patient and obtains permission. The lawyer tells her that he has permission from the patient. The lawyer provides his identification number. The patient has signed an authorization form. The patient has signed an authorization <laughs> form. Right. You can't give anything out unless the patient has signed to do so. Mm -hmm. Okay, remember I put High Tech Act dash meaningful use all right so here we go the high tech act was created to promote the use of better physician documentation electronic claim submission ehr meaningful use written consent for medical procedures c c c the word ehr meaningful use remember high tech equals meaningful okay. use And guys, don't worry, we'll go back through these on our last day. We'll take a quick test and I, we won't, everybody will just have to write their answers down. Uh, anytime you see an example question that has three that you must select, these will be on your NCCT. Okay, so let's pay close attention to these. Which of the following meets the definition of a covered entity that must comply with HIPAA? We're going to select three. All right. What is a covered entity? Is a third party payer a covered entity? Yes, it is. Is a clearinghouse a covered entity? Yes, it is. No. Because that's whenever oh. we, as a biller, I'm billing all of my stuff all day long and I send it off 
Where am I sending it to? I'm sending it to a clearinghouse. And when I think of a clearinghouse, you guys know on uh, Men in Black, when the little alien is sitting in the post office and he's doing this with his uh, throwing out the mail, that is what a clearinghouse is. When you send your batch to your clearinghouse, it's going to sort through electronically all of those bills. And he's going to say, okay, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, United Healthcare. And so it's sorting those. And then it may say, oh, this is a Medicaid. There's no, uh, the Medicaid number is wrong. And it's going to send it back over to you where you have to look at the number again. So that the, med the clearinghouse receives medical claims for distribution or rejection. So an employer, does an employer get medical records, get, get uh, claims? Doesn't. There's no need for that. That's private and personal. Pharmacies. Is a pharmacy going to get a copy of your claim form or any personal medical records? <laughs> hmm? Lee, what did you say? I said, maybe, I mean, you're right they have to know what, what the right. A pharmacy is going to receive personal information. Is it going to receive your insurance information? Yeah, yes, it is. All right. The nursing home facility. When a trans, a patient gets transferred from the hospital to a nursing home, what goes with them? Their record. Their yeah, record. Right. Okay. The patient. Would the patient be responsible for HIPAA? No, because it's their record, right? right. So it doesn't mm -hmm. really, it does not really cross those privacy rules. So the clearinghouse, you guys, you think the clearinghouse, because remember, that's where it's going to do our sorting and rejecting. The employer, does he need our medical records? No. Pharmacy. Um. Our yes. pharmacy is a covered yes. entity under HIPAA, right? Nursing yes. home facility? Yes. And the patient? No. No. <clears throat> Yay! We got it right. Which of the following requires that a medical practice informs the patient in advance interest? Interest will be charged on delinquent account. Huh? Uh, let's take think about it the patient uh, requires that the medical practice informs the patients in advance interest will be charged on the liquid account okay so let's take out the ones we know it's not is it the stark law no, uh, no. Uh, the omnibus act is uh oh can't think of the name. It's not the Anibius Act. So let's look at the Truth in Lending and the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Please. When you're collecting a debt, are you applying anything to do with interest? Yes. yes. Or when you're lending money, is when there lending money? When you're okay. lending money. All right, so let's take a vote. Who says B? Who says C? B. B. C. 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 Okay, I'm C. The, I've got four it, Bs and two Cs. So, the kind of account matters too. Okay, let's try B. Let's see. Mm -hmm. It is the truth in lending. The Federal Truth in Lending Act requires that the patients are informed in advance when the treatment is provided if interest will be charged on delinquent accounts. I always think about it if I go into the bank and I get a loan and they're going to lend me money and they have to tell me how much interest they're going to attach. If you go in to buy a car and they're going to, you're going to get a lender the lender must tell you what the percentage of interest is going to be, right? All right, we're going to do one more. The insurance and coding specialist called the patient at 7.30 a.m. to discuss an outstanding balance. Remember, we talked about when you can call, right, a while ago. 
Which of the following acts did the specialists violate? Truth in lending, fair debt collection practices, fair credit billing, or equal credit opportunity? B. Um, B. All right, we're going to go with B. That's what B. I'm hearing. That is correct. I want to do one more. I'm sorry. We just got to do one more. <laughs> I'm having fun. I want to do more. Which of the following laws require full written disclosure about the finance charges for large payment plans involving four or more installments, excluding a down payment? So we just talked about which, which act it is that has to tell you about finance charges, about interest payments. So what do we think? B? B. All right, we're going to go with B. Let's see. You are correct. So we're going to start with number 14 next week, next Tuesday, at the same time. Let me ask you guys something. Who learned something? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> Those little, little uh, words that I gave you to indicate. If you don't think you're going to remember, go into your manual and write them in one of your clear spots where there's nothing. Put it on a post-it note and tape it into the inside the cover so that it will help you remember when you take your test. You can write in your manuals. You can bring your manuals for testing. The way that you know if you can, if everything in your manual is okay, make sure that you take it and you shake it. Anything that falls out, the proctor will take. They won't allow. But if it's taped in there good, you can use these little key words. Or if you think that you'll remember Stark Law, financial responsibility referral, anti-kickback, you know, unless you feel like you're going to remember that. You guys, I have test anxiety. Anything I can write down so I don't feel nervous, I will. <laughs> That's just me. So I hope you guys enjoyed class. We're going to be right back here next Tuesday at 9 a.m. We will finish this up. If you have any questions in the meantime about this, please write it down so we can uh, resolve that in class. Um, be watching for your Moodle logins. Do not stress or fret. It's going to be just fine. Any questions? Um, next class is Thursday. Oh, next NCCT class is 9 a.m. next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. But next class is Thursday? For, for my class, yes. Next class is for, uh, what time do we do class on Thursday? <laughs> we do it at four, right? Four o'clock on Thursday. Thank you, Dawn. It's been so long since I did class on a Thursday. Yes, it'll be four o'clock. Me too. <laughs> four o'clock this Thursday. And I will be hosting this, uh, this, uh, class. Miss Ashley's class, I think that you guys do it a different time on Thursdays. Um, so you guys know your, your Zoom schedule. So, all right. Any other questions? I have, I have one more. Um, when we take the NCCT, we can take our CPT manuals? Your CPT, your ICD-10, and your Hicks picks. So we can take all of them? Yes. Okay, I have a question. These manuals that you're talking about, what, where do we, where's that coming from? You should get them in the mail. Um, in the mail? Okay. Yeah, you'll get them in the mail. Just keep an eye out for them. Sometimes it takes seven to 14 days for them to go from the manufacturer to your house. But you oh, okay. get those. When you see them, do not get nervous. They are mm -hmm. big. If you can look oh. up something in a dictionary, you can look up something in the manual. So please don't worry. And also, okay. guys, we teach you guys the hard way to code. Pretty much everything's electronic now. So we're teaching you the hard way. When you get to the your old-fashioned way. <laughs> the old-fashioned way. But let me tell you what, it gives you an understanding that some people don't have. So it's a good way to go. All right. So any other questions? No. Ma'am. Ma'am, do you, uh, can you see the, uh, I have sim, uh, a simulator? I can't see anything that you do in there. When we complete those sim, in our, in our sim chart. In the simulation portion? Really? Because, you know, we got those assignments and stuff. 
So right. I was but wondering if you could yeah. see when we do them and you know what I'm saying? I was wondering, was I doing it right? Well, we can we can actually uh you're doing them fine. But I follow the steps in the so as long as you're following the steps, you're good to go. The biggest thing about okay. sim charting, guys, is knowing how to make an appointment. If you know how to make an appointment, even though when you go to your facility, you may not have the exact same charting, the exact same calendar, you're going to know what those buttons mean. So make sure you pay attention to your form repository, where everything goes, how to update things. Make sure that you can um, make an appointment. That's really what we're looking for here. Um, I can't get in and grade all of those things. It's integrity based. Um, you know, if you don't learn how to do it, guess who it's gonna who it's gonna fall back on. You, you, you. Do you know how many of my students walk into a working interview and get the job based on the fact they can make an appointment and answer the phone on the first ring and do it? So far, five. On the spot, you don't need a working interview, you're hired. So these things will get you where you want to go. So just play in it, that it's yours. Take advantage of the resource. So, all right, guys, well, you had a wonderful day. Thank you for coming and spending time with me. I see stuff in the chat. And, um, sorry, have a great day. I will be sending instructors out a link to this. My class, the link will be in, in your Zoom class link on Genzabar. Um, hopefully, I will see all of you guys next Tuesday. Uh, my class, I will see you next Thursday, this Thursday, but you know what I mean. All right. Be blessed, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you so much for your time today. You're very welcome. Radisha says, uh, did we quit? Did the questions we did need to be done in our NCCT account? No. Nope. It's just okay. it's just a class. Just just a review class. Okay. All right, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.